fate of our children continues. Just outside Salt Lake City, Utah, six-year-old Christina is reliving a nightmare. She's resisting. Um, is that normal? The new children don't like to be touched at times. That's a very touch avoidant. Christina, there on the floor, is an adopted child who has been diagnosed with attachment disorder. This is a consenting call. The child's arms being laid across her stomach, and the other one's being held up towards the top, and mom gently laying on top of her. Christina is undergoing therapy. But this isn't therapy as most people know it. This is holding therapy. What it's supposed to do is evoke a feeling in the child. When you hurt Christina, it makes me so angry with you, I'd like to hurt you. To make you stop it so you would never hurt them again. Craig Ramsey is the clinical director at the Family and Attachment Center, one of a few facilities across the country where this highly controversial technique is used to treat kids with attachment disorder. What's the result if an attachment does not occur? If a child never learns to attach, then you have a child who is very uh, sociopathic or psychopathic in nature. So now school are Like 12-year-old Steven. He's intense with that time. That's where Stephen and his family were seen every day, three to four hours a day. His earlier sessions were designed to force the rage out of him, a rage caused by the abuse he suffered as a child. And who does Ramsey believe is hurting Stephen? He's talking about what happened to his biological father. He's projecting it towards us. What did you think when you saw him wrapped up there in that blanket? I was concerned that he was being physically hurt. Why? I don't know what's going to happen or what's going to come up. Mm -hmm. Very much this. They wrapped the blanket around me, and they rolled me up in that blanket, and then they rolled me up in another one. This particular blanket wrap is called the angel wrap, because it keeps the arms at the side and the hands at the side so the person can't come up and hurt or scratch or hit. It keeps them safe, it keeps the holders safe. Now, how does it make you feel to be wrapped up like that? Confrontation. Yeah. We artificially create a situation where they feel uncomfortable and then show them that there's an appropriate resolution. The other day I was in your room and I was looking for something in the drawer, one of your belts, your buckles or something. Yeah. I found two little G.I. Joe guns. Still there, still there. I don't like the elbow part in the therapy. I get Come on, get in touch with it. Come on. What's frustrating? Is your parents don't trust you yet? Yes. Well, you got to act in a trustworthy way, don't you? Yes. you got guns in your doors. Is that trustworthy? The you know, good feeling here is that he starts out with the toy guns, and one day they'll move to real guns. Tell well, your mom what you're scared. What you think about him? Yeah, I'm really scared. Well, time it feels like I'm being tortured and a lot of people who see it like that. How can you make children have feelings? How can you make a child have a conscience? We don't make children have feelings. Everybody has a feeling. What we help them do is identify the feeling. <laughs> you want it to love you? Yes. Then ask her. to love you? of adults holding a kid down and they're tickling them and they're yelling at them and they're screaming at them and they're saying, you know, I'm the boss and you don't have control. Yes, yes. That is not love. That's terror. And what I see is not an attachment. I see a trauma bond. Beverly James is an expert who has treated children with attachment problems. I see the kind of trauma bond that you see in people who are taken hostage. Oh, good. Do that, do that, do that, do that some more. When she looks at scenes like this, she doesn't see a cure. You could use a cattle prod and get the same thing. And if you're telling me it worked and the kid mine, that's not impressive. Up ...at the attachment center at Evergreen, Colorado, where holding therapy was pioneered.
She underwent a holding session the very first day while her mother watched. Like other critics, Greta says what she saw that day was not treatment. I called it exorcism. Why do you say exorcism? Because during the holding my daughter, features changed, her voice changed. That was not the Andrea I knew, not even the raging Andrea that I knew. It was, it was really, really incredible what I saw. Because nobody denies that this therapy looks like torture or looks like abuse. Yeah, and I was, I was even told but that. They also say, you know, open heart surgery is ugly to look at too, and that saves lives. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Can you see that point? Well, usually people with open heart surgery live. My daughter didn't. A year and a half after she arrived at Evergreen, 14-year-old Andrea committed suicide. I think the holding therapy in my case kept my daughter from the therapy she may have really needed. Holding therapy to me is brainwashing. Christy Lehman was Andrea's friend at Evergreen. She's married now with an eight-month-old baby, and she says free of her problems, but not because of holding therapy. There'd be times I get so tired, I just do whatever whatever anybody asks me to do. And they'd say, oh, well, that's progress, you know? And <laughs> and I was just doing it, so they'd leave me the heck alone because they scared me more than they were helping me. The key, she says, is simple. Fake it. I always fake my way out of it. Because, I mean, I didn't want to do what they were making me do because it didn't deal with what I was wanting to deal with. It makes me so angry when you hurt them. It makes you feel Attachment like is a primary love. It's an intense love. It's a love that makes a child feel safe. And love takes a long time. A trauma bond is instant. Hey! No, over here. What did I just say? This is a high arousal, dangerous technique and should not be done until there's research on it. Although, frankly, I don't think any university would allow this to get best past their human subjects. Well, we wouldn't be allowed to do this to, to prisoners of war. We wouldn't be allowed to do this to convicted felons. And yet, we allow this to happen to our children.